Okay, um, and we are back for another um, another stream. I took a little bit of a break, so we'll see. We will see how we feel about today and how far along we're going to go today. Okay, what do I want to talk about? I think first we're going to talk about connected but separated which was a, it's a very different state than just our human consciousness but it, it, it is still a state of separation but a lot of people still think it's connected and you're connected but you're still not conscious in the sense of there's no separation so I wanted to explore that space a little bit today um, I was actually was texting with someone a couple hours ago and this kind of came up and I thought it would be a good topic to sort of explore. So what do we mean by connected but separated? Like what exactly does that mean? And it means different, it's going to hit you different ways depending on where you are in your process. If you are in your process and you're just getting into tarot card readings, which is a big one a lot of people get into energy work i did a whole video on this so i don't want to rehash everything but everything when you start opening up to there's more than just the physical going on you know there's an energy perspective here there's an energy consciousness here that i might not understand but i'm also kind of opened up to you know i kind of want to know about it i want to know what's going on here why do i feel like there's more that meets the eye my physical eyes are not seeing everything the way i would expect to see it you know I, i'm not I'm not tapping in the way I want to be able to tap in, or we don't even maybe know that much in the beginning. We just know there's something else going on. So we start going to other people who are connected, whether it's a medium, it's a tarot card reader, it's a psychic. I'm gonna just throw up those because, or even a friend that you know. <laughs> Sometimes we just, it's funny how our universe will put certain people in our life when we're trying to start that connection process within ourselves. We'll have friends that are a little bit more connected. That A friend that's really into the chakras or will wear crystals all the time or a friend that's into dreams or whatever. You'll have a friend that has some type of connection to the metaphysical when it's our time to start opening up to it. You're not going to be out on an island somewhere and we're the, you're the only ones out there. Now it can be virtual connections too. We can virtually start connecting with people that have a similar interest or people who usually we're going to get drawn to people who have a higher vibration than us because they are going to bring us into that higher vibration. And it might just be a teeny bit more, but because that teeny bit more can really develop your connection, it'll feel like there are leaps and bounds from where we are. You know, and that's just how that's going to feel for a long time. And, and that doesn't mean we're, we don't have the capacity to get there. And that's why I see a lot of people will trip up because they, they feel like they can't get there. Like they don't have the capacity to go to the next stage. You know, they don't have the capacity to be that connected. And then we start putting people on pedestals. We start to think they know more than we do. And we can get very, very screwed up in that sense. You know, in a sense, we can kind of lose our... We can kind of lose our traction on a lot of that stuff. So we want to make sure we stay kind of open to what's in front of us, but not dependent on it. Because a lot of times we, we become dependent on these people to tell us, you know, oh, I need you to tell me what's going to happen here. I need you to tell me what's going to happen here. And then if the other person has a responsibility and a consciousness to understand, they can't play that role out. You know, they can't continue to play the role out of, let me continue to tell this person, assist this person in what's going on. Because what will happen is the other person will start to transfer all of it onto you for you to help them figure it all out or to do it for them. And they don't want to do anything. <laughs> they just want you to tell them. So eventually those connections get severed. And because they have to be. Because you cannot come into consciousness when you're depending on somebody else. So when you have that other person you're depending on, eventually they, well... They should, and eventually their universe will shut it out for them, or you, your, your universe will shut it out for you, will shut that out. Because you, you can't say that dependent on someone. Because it blurs what we're able to do. And you know, it blurs our own connection when we're dependent on somebody else for that connection. So, 
can we be connected yet still separated? Of course we can be. Now, when we first start coming through into the fourth dimension, which is just knowing there's something else going on, start waking up a little bit. It's kind of like the very beginning of the movie, The Matrix, when um, Neo starts waking up to, um, there's something, <laughs> something's a little off, you know? I mean, I don't know what it is, but you don't even know what it is. It just feels a little off. Things start happening synchronicities start happening you can start to see how things are off here things are off there you just start to feel that it's not something's going on and you you want to really get to the bottom of that you want to really figure out why do i feel this way what is going on you know let me really kind of dive into it but we don't really know how to do that you know because we're still not ready to leave any of the other stuff behind i've said it a zillion times and a lot of a lot of streams that that we'll see on consciousness. You'll notice a lot of things gets repeated. It gets said a different way. It gets said from a different space. And it gets repeated because that's how consciousness works. It has to get in there by hearing it again and again and again and again and again. That's why a lot of my streams, I feel like I touch on a lot of stuff like a zillion times, but you kind of have to, because if you don't touch on it a zillion times, it doesn't work its way into someone's consciousness. It's not just a one time, let me listen to it one time and that's all I gotta do. So, when we first start coming through, we're going to seek people who are connected more than we are. That does not mean they have the highest connection. That does not mean they are conscious in a sense. It just means they are connected. So maybe the better title for this would have been connected, but not conscious, um, not yet conscious. What does it mean to be connected? Connected to the metaphysical world. clairvoyant you might seek out people who just people call it just have a knowing I met a lot of people like that with I'm also um, sorry about that <laughs> I guess I, I think we're still good um, yeah that looks like we are hopefully that didn't that didn't drop for too long Claire Gustians, Claire Sinians, you know, you're going to go through all of them. You know, people just might, you might go to someone who just said, hey, I dreamed about you and I saw this happening and then that happens and all of a sudden you're like, hey, these people are really connected in their dream state. There's so many different iterations of connection. There's so many different ways you can be connected. A lot of us start out, people can be more connected than others. I mean, that's just how it is. You know, some people don't go as deep asleep as other people. Some people start waking up a lot earlier than um, than their counterparts, in, in a sense. I'm sorry. I'm having a teeny bit of problem. Well, just one second. I'm going to try something. See if I can get my camera going better. Okay. See if that works. Um, this happened because my camera cut out. It's just that kind of stream today when I haven't been on for a while. That's this what happens. I haven't even done videos for a while, so everything's kind of out of sorts. I don't remember where I was, but <laughs> I'll get it back in a second. Um, we can start to, oh, the dream state. Some people, some of us are just more connected in that state. We're always going to be more connected in that state. It just, it begins to flip when you get to certain parts of your ascension and parts of consciousness where you are so connected when you're awake, you don't rely so much on the dream state for that. So the dream state is then utilized for something else. Like my dream state now is utilized for clearing and sometimes um, opening up portals to uh, different aspects I'm going to embody for the next so many, you know, linear, linear months or linear years. But I don't need it to connect to see what's going to happen in a timeline. I, I have enough foresight now to see that without having to go to sleep to do that. But in the beginning, we do have to go to sleep to do that because we don't have that connection yet. We don't have that foresight yet. We can't see it because we don't have that connection. So... When you find yourself reaching out for someone who is connected, don't mistake that for conscious because those are not the same thing. And, and that's where a lot of us get tripped up because we think once we get connected, we're conscious and we're done. Whew, it's over. I don't have to do it anymore. I, I've, I've reached the pinnacle. You, you know, all of a sudden I might feel like I, my gifts are opening up. I feel more clairvoyant. I can see, you, you know, I worked with a lady years ago and she could see with her eyes closed. She could read with her eyes closed and she would just see everything, everything um, 
that I see more as um, flashes or pictures. She would just see them like in front of her, you, you know. So she would have this whole very strong, very strong clairvoyance and really being able to see through the different dimensions. Now, a lot of people call it seeing through the veils. Now I look at it, it's like it's just like seeing through the dimensions. It's just seeing through a different, a different lens. You're seeing through a different consciousness. So you're going to meet people who have a connection to metaphysical world can maybe give you a reading on your Akash can and like I said there are many Akashas so don't get too bogged down on, on it's my only Akash we have a galactic Akash you're gonna have Atlantean Akash you're gonna have a, a lot of different Akashas the the person is only going to be able to connect to how connected they are so and how conscious they are you know, just connected does not mean fully conscious it just means they have reached some kind of connective state with the metaphysical world, which means the energetic world, which means they can maybe read your energetic field. They can give you a couple beats on what your future might hold. Doesn't mean it's gonna to come to fruition. They're only gonna read the timelines they can tap into. If you shift your vibration beyond those timelines, those, those things don't play out. That shift does not play out when you, once we shift. We will always go back and go, oh, they didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> you know, uh, that reader couldn't see. They're not gonna see above their consciousness. I'm going to use the word level, but not as a comparison, just as to a marker. You know, when I use the word level, it's more as a marker where people are, not so much a um, judgment on where people are. When you're conscious, fully conscious, and it takes a while to be fully conscious. Even when we become fully conscious, a lot of us, we can't hold that full connection and we can get done. We go in and out of different levels of consciousness. Very few people I know are fully conscious, connected 100% of the time. I only really know one person that can hold that all the time. It's just not, it's not something that's that common. When you're going through your ascension, it takes a long time to get there. So along the way, we meet a lot of people that have a connection, but they're not fully conscious. And they might only be a little bit conscious. They can read a tarot card, you know, they can, they can read the energy, they, they can tap into that world, but they haven't merged with that world yet. Mediums, the same way, you can tap into that world, you can see beyond, you know, whether you're seeing beyond the veil, or people want to still say it's seeing beyond the veil, or seeing through a dimension, you're still seeing what's not, you're still seeing what's there, but in a human consciousness, it can't be seen. It's not that this shit was not there before. It's not that we just didn't have the consciousness to notice it before. We didn't see through the right eye. We were seeing through our physical eyes and not through our energetic eye. And not eventually your whole field becomes reading energy. You start to pick up on everything that goes on around you. And those can be very overwhelming when you're in those phases and just opening up to that. And you might be able to only listen to consciousness material for a little bit at a time because it's too much. It's too much for your body. The frequency is too high. You, you have to be able to integrate that in. You have to be able to kind of set with it and really get into a phase of learning how your universe is going to communicate, learning how it works. I've said many times, people don't understand the dream world because they're not in that frequency to pick up on the language. There's a reason why the more connected we get, our dreams be feel like they're more coherent they feel like they're more linear in a sense you know I really don't like the word linear but easier to follow <laughs> because we reach the frequency of that world and it's not it's like you're learning a different language but once you learn the language it's it's just it's just what's going on around you it, it's not that complicated anymore we're not dissecting it it's not we're trying we're not on the dream dictionary trying to figure out the metaphors and what does it mean if I you know I see a baby in my dream and the baby gets eaten by a snake you know oh my god what does that mean we start to trust in what we feel like it means. We start to feel into what does it mean for us? Because I will say, you know, a snake dream to one person and a snake dream to somebody else, those are two completely different dreams with two completely different feelings, two completely different messages coming through. But you have to be kind of careful with some stuff we go to that's kind of says distinctively, oh, it's this. Oh, oh, it's that. You know, oh, it's all these things, you know. Even sometimes, even we talk about, well, all the time, really, but we talk about going to a therapist and they're kind of distinct in how they see something. You have to take all that with a grain. That's how their consciousness sees it. It might not be how you see it. You know, it might not be how, what you feel like, feel like it should be. You know, when we go to see, uh, you see a lot of people in a human consciousness. 
and I'm going to depict it as a human consciousness, even people in fourth dimensional consciousness do the therapy route, but that can kind of keep you very stuck in your old patterns and systems because it kind of keeps reiterating them in a sense. Uh, I'm going to do, I think, a different video on that, so I don't want to go too far into that right now because it is kind of a whole different topic. But even in the beginning phases of the fourth dimension, that can be something we go to to kind of try to figure out what's going on. And we might try to go to someone that, that has more of that metaphysical, some people call it intuition. I mean, I still use the word intuition for a lot of the stuff I do. And I haven't moved away from that word because it is a word that triggers and makes people up. It's a word that everyone kind of knows what it means. You know, whereas the word ascension, it's not as... It's not as mainstream, talking about awakening. People don't really know what that is. Dark night of the soul. Some people are like, eh, I'm not sure what the connotation is. But intuition, even in a human consciousness, you still have a consciousness of what that is. You still feel kind of other, other different cadence to it. There's something about that word. It, it's, a, it's a key code. Just like Reiki, it's a key code. It activates people. The word activates people. You're kind of into it. You know, you want to, eventually your intuition is just really your soul. And eventually you move away from intuition because it's just, you just, you just know, you, you don't have to go tap into anything. You are the thing now. You're the beacon. You just know what you're supposed to do. You know what's going to happen here. You know how that timeline's going to play out over there. You know how other people's timelines are going to play out. That doesn't mean we get in the middle of their timelines and try to direct them through it, but you can see where it's heading. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to see where it's heading. You know, we just start to understand that. We start to be able to read the energy. You know, we start to really read the room, but in a different capacity. We read the energetic room to understand where, how things are going to come to be, how things are going to, how things are going to work out, why certain people are going to come in, when certain people are going to go out, why certain people are going to go out. You know, we, we start to connect in our own way. But there are times in the beginning where we're going to seek people out before that connection. But we cannot get so bogged down on what they say. We kind of need to look at them more as they're activating our own connection. You know, they're not the only connection we're ever going to have. They don't act as, they can act as a serial connection. But eventually we can't stay there. Because when you talk about someone being connected but separate and not, they're still not conscious enough. They still see things as separate. They still you know, our consulting spirit guides. That's a big separated unconscious in a way program that we have all these things outside of us that are not us, you know? So there are certain things people say where I know they're connected. I know they can, they can see beyond just the, the physical world. Separated state, you know, that is a separated state. When you talk about channeling you know i'll tell a lot of people to channel because it does get that connection going with your higher consciousness self you can only channel yourself you, you can't channel anything else there's no fear in channeling the only person you can channel is you there's nothing else out there but you and we realize that's how vast we are and and how how we're able to do that we lose the fear in a lot of this stuff because all that fear is in our human programming to keep us from doing that stuff to keep us from opening up it's a vicious loop cycle we will get into where we don't want to open up because we're afraid, right? All this can happen. Your body can get snatched. I can't remember hearing that one. I was like, what's going to snatch you? It's just you. Nothing else is out there. Now, does that mean people won't take really some of the, I'm going to call them darkest parts of them and externalize them and see them outside? Sure they do. Same thing with People taking, when you, we take the lighter sides, the higher aspect of ourselves and see those outside of us where you see angels or you might see aliens or you might see, you know, different, different visions, you know, because we haven't embodied them yet. Now, some people see in that physical way, other people just hear it. Other people just feel it. It doesn't mean one way is above the other way. It's just we have to be honest about what we're feeling. We have to really say what we're feeling and, and not try to play into the fourth dimensional, you know, oh, it's a ghost. Oh, it's, it's this. It's, it's a demon. It's all these other things. That When you're in that connected state, Allah, because we don't have the consciousness in yet, we will mislabel it. That's probably where I want to go with that. It gets mislabeled. You know, it gets misunderstood. Just like when you go to a medium and they're going to channel or bring in your, your dead grandmother. It's definitely, it's just an aspect of you. 
So they're going to tap into an aspect of you. Everyone around you who's ever been around you is an aspect of you. There's no where they stop and you start. They can't be in your life unless they're an aspect of you. That's how they can tap into it. But when you're in that connected state of doing that, even trans channeling is kind of the same thing. Trans channeling is where they will say they're going to, their spirit's going to leave the body and the spirit of your dead one will come in. That's trans channeling. It's still just you. They're now acting as an aspect of you bringing in something else and they really don't leave their body. <laughs> They just give, they just really, they really just hone into some, something else coming through. But they're not really, really going anywhere. <laughs> they're really not in there to begin with. Because the soul is going to be outside still in a lot of these interactions with people who are doing this type of work. Because they haven't embodied this stuff in. Because it's still lines, it's still separation. There's still these bars in between everybody in a sense and in between all this stuff. So you can go to people who are super connected but they don't have the consciousness to label things what they are. And it's still feeding into kind of some of the old fourth dimensional stuff. And I know I said spirit guide. That, that's a big one I'll hear a lot. That it's just really higher aspects of you. That's it. They're, they're animal, animal, um, animal spirit guide. Same kind of thing. They're just aspects of us. That's all they are. You know, angels praying to, to um, oh, what's the word I was going to use? Archangels. Angels. You know, when you go into God, when you go into Christ energy, all that, the religion stuff, it's still, it can be trying to connect. It is a connected state. It can be, but it's still a separated unconscious state because we're still seeing all that stuff as something else. We're also giving that stuff our power away. When you're giving, when we're giving our power away to anything, we're still in a disconnected state. We're not in a conscious enough state to see that that's just us. So anything we give our power away to, to that knows more. You know, let me pray to that God. Let me pray to Buddha. It doesn't matter. If you're still into the Greek gods, it doesn't matter where we're at with it. It's the state of connection and the state of consciousness you want to hone in on, not what it is. It really doesn't matter what it is. You, you can pray to a rock. But if you give that rock more power than you give yourself, now, now it's flipped. We've now given our power away to whatever the rock says we're supposed to do that day. And that's why I would say a lot of people that are deeply into a lot of more of the traditional religions it has a harder time with certain parts of ascension because they have to kind of overcome the mental beliefs that they've been conditioned with that it's blasphemy to go and say that I'm this person or I'm this person or, or I'm, I'm now transcending that. You know, I think I'm going to do a, a course this year on transcending different dimensions. I don't really know how I'm going to structure it yet, but it's something I kind of want to I want to put together this year at some point. Because there's so many different things we will transcend, and we start to become very foreign to other people in our life when when we've already always kind of connected in the sense of connecting with certain people over certain things, whether it be you know a religious circle we would connect in or even um, metaphysical or more of a spiritual circle, which is just, just another offset of really organized religion, we'll connect with certain people on those beliefs. But the minute we leave those beliefs, we normally have to leave those people because they will keep us kind of locked into those beliefs. There's a lot of different connected states we'll get into. And we mislabel things. And that's how things get mislabeled over the years. And we keep kind of doubling down and reiterating those things, you know, because we can't really see them. Like if I explained what, a, you know, someone seeing a ghost was, I don't know, let me say eight, nine years ago, I would explain it a totally different way than I would explain it now. Because now I would see it in a different way. I, I would, I'm more, I have a higher consciousness to put it in a different, put it in a different package, see it how it, a different facet and just seeing a facet if you start to see the whole picture and you start to see how we play into these things how we conjure these things you know how we bring all these things about and how when we stay connected c connection will lead to consciousness it, it, it will it just won't lead there it won't lead there if we stay separated with the connection you know, we have to merge with what we are trying to connect to. We have to embody in that to increase the consciousness. We can't just connect up then disconnect. You know, and I used to do that. But it, 
well, let me, let me put this a different way. We're going to do that for a while because if we don't connect up, we can't activate the consciousness to begin with. And so, and we can't embody it yet because our frequency of our body is not that high. So we can connect up, then we have to disconnect. We, we will have to disconnect because we can't take it that much. We can't take that much higher consciousness material, that much higher consciousness frequency. So we'll connect and disconnect, connect and disconnect. As long as we're conscious and understand that's what we're doing. You know, we're trying to hold it, but we can't hold it yet. You know, so we're disconnecting more of unintentionally than intentionally disconnecting. We're intentionally disconnecting. We're living from that separated state intentionally. When we are trying to hold the state, but we're slipping in and out because this person just triggered me, or I don't really, I don't really like this reality, but I'm trying to kind of jam it in and make this shit work over here, and I'm fine, and I'm okay here, and I'm really connected, and I'm, I'm really in my consciousness, and I'm, I'm holding that consciousness, I'm holding my connection, activating my consciousness. But when I go over here to work, it's a shit show, and I can't do it anymore. It takes a while before we can. Hold it takes a while for us to be able to hold everything. Normally, the places we can't hold it anymore, we learn to just let those things go because they're just not aligned with that consciousness. That's one reason we can't hold it there because it's so out of alignment. So many things in the field are working against us. We can't even keep that shit around. You know, it might be a job. It might be a person. It might be a friend group. It, it could be anything. When you find over time and time again, you just can't hold a connection because you're so, so many fields are spinning in opposite directions. There's no congruency there. Well, you can't sync up with anything. There, you're just trying to survive on your own light, so to speak, in your own connection, and it's not strong enough yet. But it can't get strong enough to leave that place behind. So we have a lot of paradoxes like that where, where we will find that I can't hold it here and I've tried and tried and tried and tried and I don't want to go here anymore because I'm so disconnected. I feel so disconnected when I'm here. There will be times that we're going we're gonna to leave some of those things in our reality to see if we can eventually get to hold it. And there will be times when your universe will say you're just not going to make it where you want to get to. By staying here, you have to go. So that's when we really have to be connected with ourselves to know which one, where am I at here? You know, we can go to other people and ask their opinion. Sure. I would call it in a way I'd always game the system. I knew different people to go to to get the answer I wanted. I knew the friend that was super sensitive that would say to do this. I knew the one that was a hard ass that would say to do this. You know, I knew how to game it. I knew who to go to to get the answer I wanted to get. It didn't mean it was the right answer. It was just the answer I could go to to get the one I wanted. There was really no right or wrong, but it wasn't my answer. You know, it can be what someone else is going to do, but where are they connected? Where's their consciousness level? Why am I asking someone in a very human consciousness to what to do in a metaphysical sense? They're not even connected yet. You know, they're so disconnected. Why am I asking their opinion? It got so, I got to a point where certain people, when they would say something, I would do the opposite because I knew the disconnected state they were in. But it was also a mirror of my disconnected state. So, this thing will start to play. Was the disconnected states start to kind of pile up. <laughs> and when we first start meditating, we consciously kind of disconnect, and now I'm going to go through my day. That's the only way we can do it in the beginning, right? If we continue to do that, now we are kind of playing in that disconnected state, and you see a lot of people who stay kind of connected, yet not conscious, but they stay in those states because they've made a lot of money in those states. They've made a lot of money being a medium. They've made a lot of money doing tarot card readings for other people. They've made a lot of money. They've become successful doing certain things. It's still hampering the consciousness they can get to. Even channeling, if they're always channeling and they're not embodying what they're channeling, they are still staying in a separated state. It doesn't mean the material that's coming out is not going to activate someone. It's not going to be pivotal for someone. But we have to recognize the states people are in and the states we're in. So we don't give our power away to someone else once we gain that connection on our own. And we can have to continue to go with that connection. Connecting just to get a piece of information. I used to do that. Well, as much as the information I wanted. And then when they got to the answer I didn't want, I'm going to disconnect and won't listen to that part. You know, Let me listen to the part where I'm going to do this. But I'm going to disconnect because I don't want to hear the rest, how that's going to end up. Because I know it's not going to end up well. And I don't really need to know that. You know, I don't, I, don't, I don't want to know that part yet. We have a lot of that game playing we'll do too. We'll hear. It's kind of like going to the friend that's going to say what we want to say. We'll connect up to get the answer we kind of want. And then we'll disconnect. We don't want to hear the rest of it. When we know a relationship is doomed, we don't want to hear that part. 
we just want to hear what we can do to kind of band-aid it for now we don't want to hear the rest of it because we know it, it's you know we're kind of chasing chasing something that's never going to be we're, we're chasing a we're chasing a reality that's not aligned and it won't it can't exist anymore it's it's become so misaligned now it kind of crashes down around us and that's kind of what we what we've come to in, in a lot of these a lot of these realities that's why people don't want to get to that consciousness level where that's not aligned anymore i see so many people go so far and then they want to stop because now all these other things have to go and i don't want that to go you know i don't want this to go i don't want all that to stay but all this other stuff can go because we do reach a part when we we get, get out of we get the connection we start to gain the consciousness we get into the fifth dimensional consciousness we haven't had to let go of a lot yet we haven't had to realign our life yet we had to, we, have, we haven't had to leave the human realities behind yet we can still play in some of those systems still in, in certain states of, of this process in those really beginning years but we get to a point where you know people you feel the happiness you feel the joy and that's enough so we want to sit there for a long period of time and I see so many people that will sit here for decades decades and never go farther because they've connected so much in that state and they've got so many cords you know we want to connect but not have the cords we can connect to that state get the consciousness move up connect in a higher state get, get a higher consciousness connection and then keep moving up but because we'll still have so many cords to what that state bought us, what that connection bought us, we don't want to let that stuff go. So you see a lot of people try to put on the brakes. And when I say try to put on the brakes, they will do their best to kind of halt. Or, you know, let me just not go any farther. Now, that'll last for a while. Uh, you know, a while we can put the brakes on it. And we really will go on and kind of do our human experience. And and that's basically what you'll see happen. I see a lot of people get to a certain place, but there's still something they might want to go do. And once they get to that consciousness level where they realize they can have really whatever they want in a sense, and they understand how the energetics work, and they're in this happy energetic place, and they can go find their, their if they've never had the twin flame experience, they want to go live that, you know? If they've never had this, I want to go live that, I want to go live that. And they want to still be in certain human experiences they didn't get yet. So a lot of people will then kind of separate and go that way for a while and sort of kind of put a pause on it in a sense and take what they've learned and go have another human experience. And that might be something you're thinking about doing. It might be a place where you're at where I've got this place, but I really want to go do this. And that's kind of where, you know, that third or fourth year into this, a lot of people will kind of stop and, and kind of pause on it and go live out a human experience. It doesn't mean it's going to last. It's not going to last. It's a human experience it's going to crumble it's going to crash it's going to be karmic sure it is but we just feel that pull to do it you know there's something in it we didn't finish yet so you'll see a lot of people that will kind of do that and then kind of pause things and, and be stuck i don't really want to say stuck but in a way they kind of stick themselves there you know because they want to go take a side road for a while and they want to go experience this or go experience so if you have people in your in your reality that are doing that, understand that that's their choice to do that. We don't have to wait behind, wait for them. You know, a lot of times I'll see other people that want to kind of wait that out. I want to wait out while they do all that stuff, and then they'll be back. We kind of have to go on. That we have to be. If you're people will use the word waste show, or I don't usually use the word. I don't really love that word, but um, in a way, that's what you're doing. You kind of have to go on and continue to increase your consciousness, continue to create your realities, and go higher and higher and higher. And what you can anchor in the light codes you can anchor in the consciousness you can you can anchor in that moment and continue to thrive and let them kind of catch up when they're ready to um whether that be with you or someone else who does something similar to you know what 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 we all do in that sense it doesn't we can't wait for them and i see a lot of people who kind of want to because we don't want to leave that stuff behind so really we get to the point we have to be honest about where we are you know am i connected yet separated am I connected not conscious am I connected and semi-conscious but there are certain things I don't want to continue to go because I got to leave all this stuff behind I will say pretty much everything I had to leave behind when I knew it was time to leave it behind I was kind of done with it anyway I might have had to clear the grief in it because our human does need to clear the grief our human consciousness needs to grieve our human aspect does and there might have been some of that here and there along the way some you know heavier you know, heavier than others but for the most part, when it was time, I knew I had to give something up. 
give a reality up, close a reality out, you know, let that reality go, resolve it, and, and kind of button it up. Most of the things I had to leave behind, by the time I got there, I didn't care about them anymore because they played themselves out so many times that we just get tired of the same shit over and over again. It got to the point where it's no point in it anymore. I, I'm in this, this really sad sequel to this really other sad sequel of this movie and I can't get out of it. So we will find that over and over again too. So, okay, I think that's good enough for today. Let me see if I have any, um, uh, have any questions, which, um, no, okay, I don't have anything. So. I think that's where I'll leave it today. I will see everyone else next time. And I think that's it.